I want to read one of the events that happens in the gospel accounts that proves that faith must have action in order to save. Now, before you run away and screaming, heretic, heretic, listen closely, okay? Because what you hear in church is not accurate. It's not correct. According to what is here in the Bible, the apostate churches that you attend, most of you, there are very few churches that are not apostate today, which is the clear indicator to me that we are, if not in the end times, we're very close. Here we go. I'm going to read all three gospel accounts of this event. This is the woman who was bleeding, who touched Jesus' clothing to be healed. So Matthew 9, it says, So Jesus arose and followed him, and so did his disciples. Verse 19. And suddenly a woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years came from behind and touched the hem of his garment. For she said to herself, If only I may touch his garment, I shall be made well. But Jesus turned around, and when he saw her, he said, Be of good cheer, daughter. Your faith has made you well. And the woman was made well from that hour. Okay? Before I comment on it, let's read the other two. Mark 5. Mark 5. Oh, here we are. All right. Verse 24, so Jesus went with him, and a great multitude followed him and thronged him. Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years, and had suffered many things from many physicians. Very interesting details there. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. Very interesting details. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment, for she said, If only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, You see the multitude thronging you, and you say, Who touched me? And he looked around to see her, who had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Wow. Way more powerful than Matthew's account. Way more powerful. More details. More emotion. Luke 8. Let's have a look at Luke 8. What does he have to say about this event? This is a good thing to do. If you want to read something in the Gospel accounts and you want to study it and understand it, it's best to read all of the accounts of it. Could be Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Could be in John also. All right, so 8. It says, um, but as he went, the multitudes thronged him. Now a woman, verse 43, now a woman having a flow of blood for 12 years, who had spent all her livelihood on physicians and could not be healed by any, came from behind and touched the border of his garment, and immediately her flow of blood stopped. And Jesus said, Who touched me? When all denied it, Peter and those with him said, Master, the multitudes throng and press you, and you say, Who touched me? But Jesus said, Somebody touched me, for I perceived power going out from me. But Jesus said, Somebody touched me, for I perceived power going out from me. Now when the woman saw that she was not hidden, she came trembling and falling down before him 
she declared to him in the presence of all the people the reason she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. And he said to her, Daughter, be of good cheer. Your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Okay? So it's pretty straightforward here about how what Jesus is referring to by faith. And yet, it's completely abused. If she had touched his garment, not believing thoroughly that she could be healed by that, it would have had no effect. It wasn't magic. It wasn't magic. It was an interaction between the woman and who Jesus is. That is what activated the power of healing. It activated it, but it did not discharge it. It did not move that healing into that woman until she actually physically touched his garment. This coincides with what Jacob says, a.k.a. James, when he says that faith without action is dead. You say action, it says deeds. The word in Greek, at the base of it, it really literally means action. It can be translated sometimes, you'll find it translated, let's say that way. It's translated sometimes as deed, deeds or works. Actions, deeds, and works is the same word in Greek, but at its base it means actions. And faith means persuasion. It's not something magical, it's persuasion. Faith without actions is dead. It's inert. It cannot be discharged. It cannot have an effect on saving a person. She was not saved by her blood flowing without touching his garment. Because she already believed before she touched his garment. How come she wasn't healed before she touched his garment? She already believed before. Her belief is what sent her there to try to touch his garment. Her belief is what sent her there to try to touch his garment. And what did she believe in? Was it a belief that Jesus is the Son of God? And that's it? No. She believed that her action with his garment would heal her. And Jesus said, your faith has healed you. Your faith. Faith in what? Well, for her, she had faith, persuasion, faith, that if she touched the garment of Jesus of Nazareth, who'd been doing all these miracles, that she would be healed. She believed that if she did that action, she would be saved. That's what faith means. If you have faith in the Son of God, it means that you have faith that if you do certain actions regarding the Son of God, you will be saved. The whole rest of the New Testament spells out what those actions are. We just had a video about holy conduct and the home of righteousness. That's part of the faith. If you have faith that if you do those things, you will be saved, then you will be saved if you do those things. If she believed that if she touched his garment and then didn't touch his garment, she wouldn't have been healed, would she? She had to actually do also what she believed she had to do in order to be saved. But if she had just come along and she saw Jesus and she didn't really believe that if she touched the garment, she would be healed, but she says, well, why not? He's here. I'll touch it and see what happens. I'll touch it and see what happens. Many people become Christians with that attitude. Well, you know, I don't know. Maybe it's true. Maybe it's not. Well, let's see. We'll just see what happens. I'll go to church. I'll read the Bible. I'll pray. I'll meet with other Christians. I'll laugh, tell stories about how I'm saved and what God has done in my life. And we'll see what happens. It's not going to happen. You're not going to be saved. 
you don't have that persuasion that if you do what God testified to here, that you will be saved. You don't have that persuasion. You don't believe in the Son of God. You have to be persuaded that Jesus is the Son of God. And that means everything that comes with it, you must do. And if you don't, you won't be saved. We just had a story that just told us what faith is and how it works. If you can't accept it, you don't accept God. Plain and simple, not my words. This is Jesus' words. This is the words of Mark. This is the words of Luke. This is the words of Matthew. Three, three of the four Gospels testify to this and enough details in each one of them to know the same conclusion. The woman could not be healed by her faith without her actions. And she could not be healed by her actions without her faith. She needed both. And you need both. And if you keep fighting against it, first off, you're in heresy. If you keep saying, I'm saved by faith alone, you're in heresy. And it's going to keep you from doing what you need to do to be saved. And also, you don't have the faith that's talked about here. You have some other kind of faith that's inert, that's dead, as Jacob says, James. Your persuasion is dead. You don't even believe that if you do the things that you're commanded to do here in the New Testament, that you'll be saved. You don't believe that. Therefore, you don't have biblical faith. How I wish you, you had, but you don't. You're not a true Christian. You're following some sort of decoy that's not Jesus. And I wish that you would follow the Jesus of the Bible. I wish you knew him. I wish you recognized his voice, heard it, and obeyed him, and followed him, and did what you need in order to be saved. This may be your last call. To the rest of you who hear, to the rest of you who rejoice, to the rest of you who do, Obey God. May the Lord bless you as you seek Him with all your heart.